Hey soldier, glad you're finally awake. Grab your pneumatic rifle, we got places to go. They've got second platoon pinned down. We're gonna get in the tank and break through their lines. Not much farther. Okay, here we are. What's that? You've never seen a tank like this before? Ha! <laughs> Well, are you in for a treat? Oh, my friends, this sleek, stylish, steamy behemoth is known simply as a Conqueror's steam tank. She's got a big old front-facing cannon, a completely mobile steam turret with all the swivel you could ever need, and most importantly, some stainless steel plate armor for all your defensive needs. Oh yeah, she's a real beaut, ain't she? Well, what if I told you there are four other versions? Oh, Mama. Today, my friends, we're going to be reviewing the Rim Hammer Steam Tank mod. Now, this mod, as many others, adds its very own workshop bench that is required to go about creating these tanks. This is known as an engineering bench, and it is at this engineering bench that you will find all six of the parts that are required to build the tanks. And this is one of the biggest things that I like about this mod, the simplicity of it. Unlike with other vehicle mods, these six parts that you see here on the screen are the only parts that will be required other than some resources like components and steel to make the tanks. And the engineering bench as well as all the tanks are simply unlocked after researching smithing. So you don't have to research each individual tank or anything like that, you just research smithing and you're good to go. As you might imagine, all of the tanks in this mod require wood to fuel their engines and of course to burn for steam. And three out of the five tanks also require wood to fuel the steam for their steam turrets. The reason that it's only three of the tanks that use logs for their steam turrets is because the indomitable steam tank doesn't actually have a turret, and the just as beautiful deliverance steam tank here actually uses chem fuel for its turret instead. Because unlike the other three that have steam turrets, the deliverance actually uses a flame turret. As you can see, all of these tanks are unique in their own way in one way or another. A great example of this, and a great place to see where all the these differences are in their health, their armor, their weapons, yada yada yada, is actually on the workshop as you can see here. First and foremost, we actually have a description that discusses the type of human and dwarven technology that these tanks are innovated from. We also have a three tier system, each tank has its own tier number, and the higher the tier number, the better the tank is considered. A good comparison here would be between the Altered Comrade tank and the Indomitable tank. The Altered Comrade tank actually actually has a thousand less health and a good deal less in both sets of blunt and sharp armor. But it also has a steam turret on top and a rotary hell blaster gun, while the indomitable tank only has an imperial ram. Both of which are tier 2 tanks and great tools, but for two totally different jobs. Once again, just to emphasize how similar these tanks really are to one another, but they are also very unique and very different from one another as well. Now though, it's time that I stop yapping about stats and all that other stuff, and it's time for me to really start glazing this mod for the things that I really like about it. I really, really like the art style. I think the tanks look really good. And to be honest with you, I think the technology fits in really well with vanilla RimWorld. I know RimWorld vanilla doesn't really have a lot of steampunk stuff, if any steampunk stuff, I can't really think of any off the top of my head, but I think if they were to add some type of technology like that, these would fit in perfectly with that, and I, truth be told, just think they go well in general. Because they really kind of fit that gap between the Victorian era and like the modern era, in my opinion. I also think that they are a hell of a lot of fun to play with, obviously, as you can see. Um, and something I mentioned and touched on earlier is just the simplicity of the research you have to do for these. Uh, you don't have to research every individual tank, and of course, all you have to do is get smithing and you're good to go. You build an engineering bench and then out out of steel, wood, and components, you can build one of these tanks, which just makes so much sense because they are a very simple design in terms of their resource requirements. And of course, once again, that is just my personal preference. I know there's a lot of people that like the more complicated mods, especially with vehicles and stuff like that, where you need a car battery, car wiring, car alternator, car engine, all these things that you would actually need for a car. And I think that that does add to the realism. 
but I think with these steam tanks you get the realism, but you also get the simplicity of a simple steam tank that simply has uh, some steel plates on the outside, a little bit of a wooden interior, you know, I mean, something easy like that. It's all up to your personal preference, but with these types of mods, you can always have your cake and eat it too, because you can always add as many mods as you like. Which also brings me to my next point, because whenever I do one of these little mod reviews or just kind of showcases, I always like to recommend mods that I think go well with the mod that we're talking about, and I definitely want to do that here too. First and foremost, since the Steam Tanks mod is a Warhammer 40k mod itself, any of the Warhammer 40k mods on the workshop, of which there are an absolute plethora, would probably be a good match with this one as well, of course, simply because they're from the same lore and the same universe. Now, to give you some more specific examples, and some that are actually away from the Warhammer 40k universe, uh, some of the mods that I'm actually using right now with the Steam Tank mod is the Steam World Uniforms, Steam World Uniforms Prestige, and Steam World Defenses. All of these add some really great early 19th century types of apparel, armor, weapons, and things of that sort that I think really complement the Steam Tanks. In particular, from the Steam World Defenses mod, I really like the pneumatic rifles. Yes, indeed, it's not exactly a clockwork or steam punk rifle, but it is a gas-based rifle that uses air. There's also a really great air rifle itself and an air pistol that I also think really complement the steampunk style. Now, the Steam World uniform mods are really great, but they're more of a military style mods, while the Victorian era apparels mod is really good for some, uh, some military personnel, of course, but also for a more day-to-day -day apparel style. Perhaps you don't always want your colonists looking like they're going to war, or maybe you have some colonists who are going to be doing some different duties like construction, and you want them to have a more citizen-looking style to them, and I think this mod would also be perfect for that, as it also has some apparel and whatnot from the early 19th century. And now, for the coup de gras, we have the Clockwork and Steam Continued mod. Now, this one hasn't been updated in quite a while, that's why it is continued, and has indeed been updated by someone else for 1.5. But even so, a steampunk mod specifically for steampunk will of course go very well with a steam tank. Now, this mod also adds plenty of weapons like firearms and even a bow and arrow as well, but as I had mentioned, it doesn't seem as though it's been updated by the actual creator in quite a while, and thus the designs and art style, it's still a bit minimalist. Probably the greatest part about this mod though, it has its very own tech tree essentially, with clock and steam being its own little category here with the construction menu with a smorgasbord of different types of things you can build like a uh, clock making bench and alloy furnace and all sorts of other things that are required to go about making uh, more advanced and more advanced types of weapons and whatnot throughout the mod. And as mentioned though the art style may be a little bit minimalist there is still a lot to offer here with the clockwork and steam mod. And I think it gives a really good aesthetic to your colony when and using the Steam Tank mod as well. And I think you can see here that the art styles of the two mods actually clash really well together, and that's why I personally am using both of these mods in my RimWorld Restart on Death series, where we're actually kind of playing as Steampunk Samurai. But my friends, in conclusion, the Steam Tanks mod is really fun, it's really great, they look amazing, and they're just really fun overall to play with, and I think they would be a wonderful addition to your colonies if you would like to add them, of course. I know this kind of sounds like an infomercial now that I'm hearing myself back in the recording, but no, I, you know, I haven't spoke with a mod creator or anything like that. I just really like the way these look, and I think these kinds of ideas like this for Steam Tanks, even though they are a part of the uh, Warhammer 40k lore already, I just love these simple little vehicles like this, and I think they're, they're really awesome. Of course, though, if you are interested in this mod, any of the mods that I have shown off during this video and or recommended, or any of the mods that I'm using, in this video, feel free to check the video description as there is going to be a list of the mods there. Of course though, my fine friends, if you guys have any mod suggestions that you might like to see me cover or you'd like to share with our fine community, be sure to leave that in the comments section down below. But I love you guys ever so much, I do hope you enjoy the mod and or mods, I hope you have enjoyed the review and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.